Welcome to our lecture online. Now here's an example of how we find the lowest common denominator to solve that fraction. Here again you can see that if you try to multiply all those denominators together you end up with a very big denominator. So it's better to find the lowest common denominator. So we're going to use two methods to do that. Our first method is to find multiples of the largest of the denominator and see if the smaller two denominators fit evenly into that. So starting with the first one, so obviously 12 and A do not evenly fit into 20, so that's not a lowest common denominator. So how about the next one would be 40, so 2 times 20, that's equal to 40. And now does 8 fit in evenly into 40? The answer is yes. Does 12 fit evenly into 40? And the answer is no. So 40 is not a good lowest common denominator or at least it's not even a lowest common, not even that it's not a good one, it just isn't the lowest common denominator. That's a better way to say it. How about 3 times 20? So that gives us 60. That's our next opportunity. So does 8 fit evenly to 60? The answer is no. So we don't have to check for 12. We could, and yes indeed, 12 does fit, but 8 doesn't. Hmm, well, we keep going. How about 4 times 20? Well, that is 80. And here you can say that 8 goes into 80, even, even number of times, 10 times, but 12 does not. All right, the next one would be uh, 5 times 20, which is 100. Does 8 fit into 100 evenly? And the answer is no, and neither does 12. So definitely that is not an LCD. How about 6 times 20? That's 120. Does 8 fit evenly into 120? And the answer is yes. Does 12 fit evenly into 120? And the answer is yes. Since both fit evenly into this, then that would then become the lowest common denominator. So we can say that we're going to end up with three fractions where the denominator is going to be 120. All right, before we solve the, the problem, let's try our second method. Our second method was to take each of the three denominators and write it as a product of its factors. So 12 can be written as 2 times 2 times 3. So we have 2 occurs twice, 3 occurs once. 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2, so 2 occurs 3 times. And 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5. And so 2 occurs twice and 5 occurs once. So now we're going to circle Wherever, whatever factor occurs the most for any one number. So we see that factor 2 occurs three times here, twice here and twice there, but three times there. The factor 3 occurs once here, and the factor 5 occurs once there, which means that the lowest common denominator is equal to 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8 times 3 is 24 times 5 is 120, which of course is the same common denominator that we found there. And so either method works. In this particular case, it looked like this method was a little bit easier and faster, but whatever you prefer. Now that we found the common denominators, now we take a look here and ask ourselves the question, what do we have to do to this denominator to turn into 120? We have to multiply this one times 10, which means we have to multiply the numerator times 10 as well. Here, 8, to get from 8 to 120, we had to multiply this denominator by 15, which means we must multiply the numerator by 15 as well. And finally, to go from 20 to 120, we had to multiply this denominator by 6, which means we have to multiply the numerator by 6 as well. Remember, whenever we do it to the denominator, we must do exactly the same to the numerator. So that means that we have 5 times 10, that gives us 50 as our new numerator, 3 times 15, which is 45, and 6 times 7, which is 42. And now we can go ahead and add all the numerators since we have one common denominator of 120. So this is 50 plus 45 plus 42, all divided over the common denominator of 120, which is equal to 137 over 120. And that would then be the final answer. I don't think we can reduce that because I think 137 is probably a prime number. And that's how it's done.